Hi, I'm Linda. I'm 21. I'm studying to become a dietitian at a Canadian university, and I'm also an amateur YouTuber on the side. Becoming a dietitian was always my dream job, but I'd like to give you a little bit of background before we dive in. Once upon a time, my childhood was filled with calorie counting, food guilt, body shaming, restricting. I did a lot of dieting and not much playing. I've also always been an overachiever, a people pleaser, a little bit of a perfectionist. Those things mixed together resulted in a pretty serious eating disorder and exercise addiction. And I guess stereotypically, I grew up under the illusion I need to be a doctor, lawyer, professor, you know? But secretly, my favorite class was always foods and nutrition. It sounded like a dream, a job where I can talk and think about food all day. I literally do that anyways. I ended up choosing to do a double degree with science and business, and every year I'd go to my guidance counselor asking if I could switch into dietetics. I never went through with it, until my fourth year, where I finally did. So this is a realistic week of what I eat, what I've learned, how I'm doing, and why I decided to drop out. We're starting this week of eats off on a very cold Canadian morning. DoorDash says, hey Linda, your order has been picked up from London Chinese restaurant and your dasher is on the way. Yay! It is so freaking cold outside. There's ice everywhere. It's negative a million degrees. Calls for a delivery order. What's this? Oh, that is chicken feet. One of my greatest joys in life is ordering takeout with mother son. It's really hard to find good quality dim sum in my little hometown. So we've lowered our expectations significantly. So even very mediocre Chinese food excites our taste buds. I have been craving this beautiful chewy sticky rice. Just look at her in all her sticky yummy glory. It's very much addicting. No way. Like the flavor is just infused into the rice. And I don't know what it is about Xiaolongbao, but they're like little chewy pieces of flavor happiness to me. <laughs> These were three donuts. They were stunning. I ate them all yesterday. Definitely stale. I've tried living many different versions of a healthy lifestyle, and the only one that worked was, you guessed it, one where no foods are off limits, I can listen to my body, I can focus on feeling good instead of looking good, one where I can prioritize my own version of food freedom rather than prioritizing a smaller body. I never again want to live a life where the way my body looks and the food I eat controls how I live or harms my mental health. That's just not the purpose of food, and that's not the purpose of life. I mean, we'll be all good. Get the chip. I want to remind everyone right now that the what I eat in a day or week videos you watch are not there for comparison. For example, this week I had exams, I was stressed, I was overly emotional, and I was also horrendously sick, so my appetite and food choices and gym time was very different from normal. And that's very normal. I want to give you comfort in knowing that what you eat, how much food you need, and what you crave, and when you crave it, it's going to be different from other people, and it's supposed to be. <sighs> While I don't waste any more time stressing about food for myself, for anyone that owns a dog, I think all my stress now is about my dog's food, health, and happiness. This is Milo. You've seen him around, chasing me around kitchens, screaming at the dinner table, begging for food. You know, being Milo. The problem isn't that Milo doesn't like to eat kibble, he just doesn't like any of the 12 brands of kibble we've tried in the past four years of his existence. At this point, we've probably tested out every healthy recommended popular kibble out there with no luck. Until we found Sundays. Seriously. Milo has never loved anything more, to the point where he chooses it over peanut butter. And little does he know, it's so good for him. Sundays is air dry dog food made from a short list of human grade ingredients. It contains 90% meat, 10% vegetables, and 0% synthetic nutrients. Sundays has saved us so much time. At one point, we resorted to cooking him chicken with rice at every meal. And Sundays is zero prep, zero mess, and zero stress. And it ships right to us. And Mother Son particularly loves that Sundays cost 40% less than other healthy dog food brands. And as you can see, I'm not kidding, Milo is actually upset when there's no Sundays in his bowl. So Sundays has made Milo very happy, but in turn, make Mother Son very happy happy, which makes us all very happy. And Sundays wants to make you happy too, so they're giving you 35% off your first order. You can go to the link in my description or use Linda at checkout. Also, round of applause for Milo for getting his first brand deal, guys. <laughs> So my family doesn't do the big holiday celebration shebang with the turkey and pie and the family gatherings. Sometimes we celebrate Mother's Day one month late or birthdays eight days early. I think the most important thing for us is just being together and the food, obviously. So that's why we're making Christmas dinner about one month late and for lunch. That's cooked. It's juicy. I think I know how to cut this off. There's a bone. <laughs> Growing up, I heard dietitians say things like, you should eat this instead of that. This is more filling, this is higher nutrients. You can eat whatever you want, sweetie, but just stay away from sugar, butter, fat, carbs, and processed foods. And now that I'm studying nutrition, I really believe that all of these foods belong in a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, air fried sweet potatoes are yummy and higher in nutrients, but sometimes you just need that satisfying crunch of a real potato chip. I could eat a healthified high protein baked thing, but something about a buttery flaky croissant sounds 100% more appealing some days. Chocolate may be lower in nutrients, but it's high in happiness, and good for my soul and life is just better with it. They freaking upgraded. No more shaking. 
<laughs> I think I put it in wrong. Oh my god, cool. Oh! Cool. Oh no, oh no. These days, almost everything is labeled as unhealthy, but for me, I feel unhealthy when I'm restricting foods, physically or mentally. I feel unhealthy when I overthink every food decision. I feel unhealthy after a day of not allowing myself to eat chocolate and then eating all the chocolate in my house in one sitting. It's healthier for me to eat the cookie than fear it. It's healthier to enjoy the pasta than deprive myself of it. Having a healthy relationship with food is healthier than any diet. Health can look like food freedom. I think health is meant to. Anyways, right now I'm on a train headed into a city for a few days so I could attend a Gymshark event and I drank a green tea because unfortunately I was starting to feel sick. I also got this tray of goodies, Miss Vicky Chips, bestest crispiest things ever invented, a smooshed apple pie square, chocolate, one lonely mini pickle, a very stale brick, some delightful candied pecans, and a plate of surprisingly high quality cheese, apricot jam, and expensive crackers. This craving pad thai. I also wanted to give you guys a little update on the Gymshark situation. If you didn't know, Gymshark yeah, dropped me or fired me, and of course, I could just be mature about all of this and say after two years of working together, we just weren't the right fit for one another anymore, but that's no fun, so. Maybe my greens will revive me. So unfortunate. I never get sick. The sickest time was two years ago when I went to London for a Gymshark event. Guess what I'm doing today? A Gymshark event. It doesn't take a uh, genius to see that I didn't exactly match the physique of a typical Gymshark <laughs> athlete, and of course, it bothered me at times, especially because I was constantly reminded of it because my Instagram feed was filled with other athletes' bodies. Very toxic for my body image, by the way. Last year, the sales for my link weren't high enough and my growth across all channels plateaued, and because Gymshark is a business and I'm a marketing tool, they didn't like that very much. Over these past two years, I've also struggled a lot with mental health and burnout, which meant sometimes my posts were delayed or up later than they'd like, and Gymshark actually used that against me to try to deduct my pay. Immensely grateful my taste buds are still functioning. Oh, still in the exact same position. My hair is in the tightest ponytail ever, suffocating my scalp. I'm gonna get a couple protein bars on the way there. Oh, delicious. Tell me. Oh, I'm so antisocial and so introverted and so awkward. We're gonna try our best. That's all we can do. Standing in the closet by myself, I have social anxiety, and I don't know a single person. So. It's okay. Just suck it up and get up some and at the time this video was filmed, I was struggling really badly with my mental health and situational depression. So much of my worth these past three years have been tied to these partnerships and brand deals and the numbers that come with social media. So when Gymshark dropped me, it almost reaffirmed to me that I wasn't good enough anymore. Like, oh, there's another reason to hate myself. And then I woke the frick up and realized I was being a silly little baby child and that I was the problem. I made it personal. I gave them the power over how I felt about my self-worth. With or without them, guys, we are awesome and strong and our value as human beings does not change. Robin. Yeah, I had a moment where I was really nervous. I just like hid in the closet. I'm never gonna go to these things again because Gymshark doesn't want me. And honestly, now, a few months later, I see this ending with Gymshark as a blessing in disguise. I think it's been the best thing for my mental health and body image. I don't have to always take pictures of my body. Look at an Instagram feed of toned and flexed and edited woman. I don't have to compare. I don't need to have any other body than my own present me can finally see that my little breakup with Gymshark was truly for the best. Instead of using their rejection against myself, I see it as a chance to work on myself, to discover what content I want to create that inspires me now, figure out who I am without the pressure to be or look like a Gymshark athlete or whatever. But at this time, hysterically crying me, I was struggling with a lot of different things. I was really burnt out. I had zero self-esteem or compassion towards myself and I just needed time to heal from it all. I feel like I just don't have a purpose anymore. Like, what made him tea like I'm Like, why? I want to do something, but I have nothing. I don't have anyone to see. I have nothing to do. You like I matter to anyone. Oh, 
下，你现在需要吸一个休息，你就是太累了。你总是忙了这个，还有那个带出来，还有那个要那个要做，还有那个要做。休息是让你更好，再再起来再做事情。每个人都需要一个 break， 不要给自己这么多 pressure。我看着你都怪可怜的，我都心疼。我不想让你这样的，你以后有个时间去做，你不能把自己累的到你什么都不想干了。现在就是给你自己一个喘气的休息的时候。It's okay. It happens. You need to cry. You need to eat. I feel like ramen will make me feel happier. I need to go take a shower because I'm gross. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna spend the rest of the night doing nothing. Pre-dinner dinner. Last night's bad day. Wow. Worth it. Enter. Holy crap, that is so good. I think it's crazy how food changes lives. Those are some noodles. I actually think I've lost my taste. Let's test it out with this banana. I have like 30% of my taste, I think. I don't think I'd be able to tell this was a banana if my eyes are closed. Yeah, it looks like a mushy substance. Today. Why am I gonna spend money to like Uber Eats fun food to me if I can't even taste it? But it's not an excuse not to eat. I can kind of taste the peanut butter, but it's just all my imagination. We'll never know. So I filmed this during exam season. I think I was studying for my biochemistry exam, which was actually the only class I enjoyed, which is also a little bit of a red flag. You see, for so long, I've wanted to study nutrition. I was convinced it was my calling in life. <gasps> I'm wheezing. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. I thought I could hit the gym today. But when I went to class, I hated learning. I wasn't interested in the curriculum. I wasn't excited about dietetic internships. Honestly, I couldn't even picture myself working as a dietitian. And rewinding back to when I started YouTube, I somehow became the what I eat in a week girl. So as a next step, it made sense to become a dietitian. I saw it as a way to create more content, to be more credible, to keep surviving on this platform. It's not because I wanted to, it's because I thought I had to. And rewinding back even more to all those years when I was younger and obsessed with food, this obsession, it's everything I knew, everything I thought about. It became what I was comfortable with, it became who I was. And for all those years, I thought I wanted to be a dietitian because I love food. But really, I loved it a little bit too much. I don't know why I've been in such a pad thai mood. So all this time, was it my passion calling or was it my eating disorder? Was it interest or was it comfort? Was it for me or was it for YouTube? Oh my god, this is so good. Why am I addicted? Those are the questions I never really thought about or maybe I just didn't want to think about. I also like don't want to show you how disgusting I am, but this. So I've taken these past few months to think about it, do some self-discovery, some healing, and it's become very clear to me that I never wanted to be a dietitian. My obsession with food did. I don't want to talk about food every day for the rest of my life. I don't want to have to be reminded of my past every day. And I kept thinking to myself, I don't want to do this anymore. And that scared the shit out of me because what was I going to do next then? Mr. Uber is almost here with my eats. So I went to bed last night craving sweet potatoes. The body wants what it wants. So ridiculously cute when they write your name and they put like a heart. Oh, that is a perfect sweet potato. And it's so mushy. Mm. I've always thought my relationship with food and my body was the thing holding me back from living my fullest life. But really, the thing holding me back has always been the way I value myself. I thought once I got the perfect body and job and relationship, I'd be happy, content. Once I made this much money or got this many subscribers or lost this much weight, I'd be good enough. But I'd achieve these things that were supposed to make me happy and you know, they never did. Then I'd raise the bar, do more, own more, achieve more, but nothing was ever enough for me. I was still that same insecure self-loathing girl, just in a different body, a bigger house, and with a YouTube channel. Never once did I consider that maybe what I needed wasn't more things or money or views, but more 
kindness, more self-acceptance, and more self-love. Mm. So by the time I'm getting around to posting this video, I've dropped out of my program, took a break from YouTube, left my home, and I'm traveling Southeast Asia and disconnecting from everything to reconnect with myself for what feels like the first time. Because from the reason I decided to study nutrition to all the reasons I couldn't keep studying nutrition, to the pressure of being online, to how I prioritized YouTube over family and friends and health and sleep and my own well-being, I decided it wasn't worth it anymore. Everything I've taken from myself to be what I thought was a better, more worthy version of myself wasn't worth it anymore. Are you ready? I'm not ready. This is a big moment for me. One of you physically went to the store, picked out food that you thought I would like to eat that I can't get to because I'm banned from the United States and I will never be able to go to Trader Joe's ever in my life. And you sent it to my house. They aren't much, but I hope you enjoy them. There's so much! What do you mean? I feel like you're less of a YouTuber in a good way and more of my friend, smiley face. Rooting for you, friend. She has good handwriting. You know, look how beautiful. Cute! And the bubble wrap is good quality. Look at this. Look at these <laughs> freaking huge bubbles. Oh my god, these are the peanut butter cups. Oh! You're kidding me! No, there's so much. Stop. Oh my god. Oh, those weren't even the peanut butter cups. These are the <laughs> peanut butter cups. This is the classic. Ew. Peanut butter frilled pretzel nuggets? Oh yeah. I'm gonna eat this right now. How did you know? Sour cream and onion flavor. It's my favoriteest of all favoriteest chip flavors. I'm overwhelmed. <sighs> this is aggressive spoilage. Realizing that something isn't working is very scary. Realizing the things that you thought would make you happiest don't is terrifying. But accepting that life is meant to be filled with twists and turns and growth and uncertainty and so many different versions of you, that's liberating. One of my favorite sayings these days is when there's uncertainty, there's also possibility. So do I feel bad for giving up? for dropping out. I don't really consider this giving up on myself. It's more like me choosing myself. This is me loving myself, putting myself, my feelings, my well-being before school, before friends, before YouTube, before the opinions of others. I think that's what self-love is. And it was not comfortable. It was a very foreign concept to me, loving myself, loving myself enough for me to make the decision to change. But I just hope that the more you do something, the easier it becomes. Two pancakes for 22, three nut butters because I wanted three. I may be a dropout nutrition student, but I can still help people love themselves without becoming a registered dietitian. I can spread my passion for food freedom and recovery without giving myself the pressure to save everyone. I can be grateful for my life and love what I do and still be burnt out. I'm still strong, even if I need a break. So I'm never gonna be able to tell you the right and wrong things to eat. I can't be your dietitian, but just being your friend sounds pretty good to me. I can be someone who's here to remind you. You're awesome. I'm proud of you. You got this. You're beautiful and health doesn't look a certain way. Working out more intuitively, resting more, stretching more, losing weight, throwing out your scale, cooking at home, sleeping earlier, setting boundaries, getting the pastry. All of these can look like choosing yourself for different people. It's a little clumpy. Oh, I forgot. Do you have homework? Yeah. I don't have homework. <laughs> and while I chose to end this chapter here, any ending is a little bittersweet. Any goodbye stings a little. These food labs brought me more happiness than I can express. Not because of the lab, but because of the people. Seeing them for two hours was the highlight of my week. No! Well, like, it was in person. You ghosted him in person? Oh, yeah. oh, still a lumpy. All right, are you ready? I just make sure there's no bubbles. <laughs> there's supposed to be bubbles! <laughs> but endings are what make you grateful, and that's exactly how I feel. So grateful for the things I learned and the people I met, and of course, all the delicious and questionable foods we created and consumed. I've been thinking of you all this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is sweet, so we like it. It's hot. It's hot.
Dear friends, let go of what you've been taught to think the perfect diet or body looks like. Let go of what you've been taught the perfect life looks like. It's just your life and what you want to do with it. You're here to do so much more than to lose weight, to shrink your body, to resent yourself, to be so hard on yourself, to be unhappy, to feel stuck. You're here to do so much more than to be productive, to work, to achieve, to feel exhausted, to complete the to-do list of your life. I'm here to love, spend time with my family, to laugh until I cry, to cry when I watch sunsets, cry when my heart is broken, cry when I eat really yummy food. I'm here to heal, to not take life so seriously, to live and to eat, I'd say those two are the same thing, to spread kindness whenever I can, to really treat myself like someone I love. We're all fighting different battles, guys, so be kind to yourself and to others. I guess I lied a little bit at the beginning of this video. I'm now 22 years old. I'm not a nutrition student anymore. I have no idea who I am or what my dream job is or what I want to do with my life next. And I'm okay with that. I love you so much. You're always worth it. And you're always enough.